This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. The trial of Alec Baldwin is getting underway, and there's a lot of questions of responsibility in this case. Who is responsible for those live rounds getting into that gun? Who is responsible for making sure that they shouldn't have, uh, or even getting on the set? And, and who's responsible for checking to make sure that uh, the rounds in a live weapon on a set are not, in fact, live? Uh, joining me to discuss, Javon Scott, psychotherapist and author. We already saw the trial of uh, uh, Hannah Gutierrez earlier for, of course, the death of Helena Hutchins. Uh, and she was found guilty, is currently serving her time. Is this that different of a trial, uh, in your opinion? Well, it, it certainly looks different. If Alec is being judged on um, simply being another actor, mm -hmm. that I think means he has very different responsibilities than the armorer has. Mm -hmm. And of course, Hannah Gutierrez Reed was the armorer. And I think it's appropriate that she's exactly where she needed to be because she ultimately was the one responsible. So to me, it's a gray area. You mm -hmm. know, it's really questionable. Um, you know, was Alex responsible because he was one of the producers and therefore set the tone mm -hmm. for how safe the set was overall? Or, you know, is this just something that we're going to have to say at some point, um, one person has been found guilty and, and the rest may be in that gray zone. You know, he is accused of pulling the trigger. He says he didn't pull the trigger. I don't know enough about firearms mm -hmm. to be able to make a judgment on that. Is that possible for the gun to discharge if he didn't pull the trigger? I sure. don't know. I don't know enough about firearms myself. Um, I, I would have, I mean, I, I've shot a gun a few times in my life at like a range or something. Uh, but in no way am I an aficionado on the topic um, or an expert. Um, but I mean, I would imagine, you know, if you're cocking a gun, uh, which is what he was doing, it's not that crazy to think that the thing could fire or misfire, even if you don't have your finger on the trigger. Um, yeah. Again, the question is, why were there even bullets in the gun for this sort of scene? Because it wasn't even uh, really necessarily required uh, i think that's one of the bigger questions i have on this whole thing but it's kind of a you know his word versus others yeah i think it's it's common sense to think there's no reason he would ever want to be in this position or try to hurt no. uh, the cinematographer no. um but it's it's a it's a tricky area people want they want blood they want uh, yeah. they want someone to to go down for this and obviously uh, Hannah Gutierrez already has, but there's a lot of, you know, not a lot of love out there for some people for Alec Baldwin. He's kind of a yeah. controversial figure. How much do you think that's going to play uh, into this? It, it probably plays a lot into it because I, I think if he were a less controversial figure, it might, he might not ever have been charged, but mm -hmm. he's not well liked. And, and that has to have some influence on it all. To, you know, to me, it's just a terrible tragedy. And, and I do certainly see civil liability for people who set the tone on that set and, you know, were putting the kind of time pressure on the armor that they were putting. And I think that led to a whole host of, of the things that you saw go wrong down the line. I've heard some very interesting arguments from uh, an attorney uh, in New Mexico, which is where this trial is taking place. Um, and they kind of surround the culture uh, of the area. There is a lot of gun ownership. There's a lot of, you know, male gun ownership. And if you're to talk yeah. about the, um, uh, the the hierarchy of who's taking care of a gun in a home, it is typically the male. Uh, and, and these are the jurors. These are the jurors uh, from that area that are, are likely going to, at least some of them are going to have that sort of a uh, an outlook. Alex says he doesn't own a firearm at home. He says his wife won't let him have a firearm uh, at home. Uh, but in a culture where there is a lot of guns, uh, it's passed down usually safety of, you know, this is how it works. Don't use it this way. Don't use it that way. Um, is that going to be a valid argument of, look, Alec is not really an expert in, in firearms. Obviously he's been in movies and, and has, I'm sure held one before, but if you have a culture that pretty much, you know, I'm sure a high percentage of males do use guns, or own guns and know how to use them. And they're going to look at Alec Baldwin and go, why don't you, why don't you know how to, to handle this better? I mean, it's very 
easy to accept. I, I would think outside of this that it just doesn't. Um, but mm-hmm. if that's not the culture and that's your jury, that mm-hmm. uh, that could have a very interesting impact on this case. Yeah, it's a really good point, and and it is certainly something that would probably weigh in that that people assume that everybody has a certain basis of knowledge that in truth they don't have, but it also highlights again, how important it is to have an adequate armor on the set and for everybody to be just religious about safety. And clearly that wasn't what was going on there. Uh, Recently, there was a uh, a win uh, for Alec uh, right uh, before the trial has started. Uh, The question was, are we going to tell the jury, uh, inform the jury that he was a a producer on this? And anyone who knows how that works you could like literally have almost no involvement with a film and be labeled a producer. You could just have a financial stake in it uh, or it's a gift (laughs) and you're labeled as a producer, but obviously he's on the set. He's more than just that, but there's concern that the jury may look at that and go, wow, he's a producer, not fully understanding what that role actually Mm -hmm. means. Mm -hmm. Um, And go, Oh, he's like the CEO. It's not, true um and the the win was they're not going to disclose that to the jury they don't have to say to the jury now that in fact he was a producer on this do you think that that is is a fair judgment on the part of the court uh or should this you know he in fact was a producer uh should that you know just be laid out there and, and maybe explained it's it's hard for me to say. You know, I can see it going either either way. And yeah, the producers are often people who are there in name only. They've just put up money. But but you know, you do have the civil liability in that case, which I do think everybody that was associated with that movie is they're going to be paying for it. Yeah, uh, without a doubt. I mean, they they this is not going to end without. Uh without a fight and clearly the fight uh, is going to be going on uh it'll be fascinating to watch probably about a two-week trial hopefully it's only about a two-week trial um but at the end of the day with, with something like this you know everybody goes well the family will get justice is that is it justice you know i mean no. it, at the end of the day when someone walks no. away from something like this uh is that family gonna feel oh great alec baldwin's you know gonna be fine he's gonna go to Maybe he'll go to jail for a little while. Uh, is that going to help anything? Yeah, no. The t- tragedy of Helena Hutchins' death, I mean, just absolutely should not have happened. And that's never going to be made okay. There's no balancing that out. Yeah. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.